I create my videos and articles when I notice a lack of easily accessible information about a particular topic. Well, there is one video in Spanish on YouTube that discusses disassembly of the P230. I believe that there are easier methods that are less likely to cause damage to the firearm. I first became familiar with the SIG P230 many years ago when my 60 person police department was one of the first to switch to SIG Sauer pistols in 1989. In preparation for that transition, I attended the SIG Armors School. While the P226 was a standard issue, officers were authorized to purchase and use the P230 for off duty and undercover situations. The disassembly process for the P230 and the P232 differs from other P-series SIG pistols. If you regularly take apart the P230, disassembly should not be a problem. However, if you have never fully disassembled this model or have, haven't done so in a long time, it can be challenging and has its own unique characteristics as we will explore. Here is the pistol field stripped for cleaning. Be sure that you complete standard cleaning before further disassembly. It is a good idea to follow along using the SIG Armors manual for the P230. This manual can be downloaded from several locations on the internet. I personally never remove the takedown lever unless refinishing or there is corrosion. It is documented that some P232s and P230s have suffered failures of the takedown lever. The two common failures are separation of the lever, lever arm itself from the pin and breakage or damage of the slide stop or slide stop pin. People have had to send their pistols back to SIG to be drilled out. SIG has no replacement parts. They return the gun to you in parts. For these reasons, I avoid removal. This assembly can be cleaned and lubricated while still in place. When removing the slide catch lever or any parts, use wood or soft tools as much as possible to avoid marring the finish. Always keep your fingers on the slide catch spring when removing, otherwise it will fly away. Carefully remove the spring. Remove the grips carefully not to lose the trigger bar or the decocking lever springs. Note that the grip screws are not the only piece holding on the grips. There are metal washers under each grip do not lose. They are rough and designed to both hold the grip and the screw in place. Protecting the hammer so it does not fall under the frame, pull the trigger while holding the hammer so that it softly falls all the way into the down position. Do not let pressure off the hammer, else the hammer will spring back slightly away from the frame. While holding the hammer fully forward, force the magazine release out and away from its working position. This will allow the hammer strut magazine catch assembly to be removed. 
There are three main types of gunsmith pin punches that should be used when working on firearms. Each is designed for a specific pin and needs to be used to help prevent deforming hard to remove pins. Plus, it reduces finish damage to the pin. The flathead punch, this is the normal type punch seen in common hardware stores used on pins with flat heads. Cup punch, this type is used on pins with rounded ends. Roll pin punch, used on roll pins. A roll pin is in reality a flat piece of steel rolled into a circle, made slightly oversized to the hole and designed to compress upon being driven into the hole. A nipple or round protrusion on the end of the punch is designed to fit into the roll pin exactly for easy install or removal. Using another type of punch on such pins can result in deformation of the pin. These pins are purchased through sellers of gunsmith supplies such as Brownells or Midway USA and should be used. Another item that is almost indispensable and can be used for many other purposes is a set of pin gauges. For about 50 bucks, you can have a set containing all the likely needed sizes. It is so much easier for both disassembly and reassembly to have slave pins that are the same size as the actual gun pin you are working with. Makes a difficult task easy. Remove the trigger bar spring. Always keep one finger on springs so they do not fly off, never to be seen again. Lift off the trigger bar. Use a wooden or plastic tool for removal so as to not mar the finish. Wiggle it out. Take the correct size flat punch and push out the trigger pin from the right to the left. Remove the trigger. Hold down on the decocking lever. This pushes the sear away from the hammer. With the correct sized slave pin, push out the hammer pin. Note how the hammer and safety lever slash disconnector fit in place. Remove the slave pin and both pieces will fall from the frame. Carefully remove the decocking lever spring. From the rear of frame, release remaining sear spring pressure by moving spring tip from over the edge of the frame. Take care not to mar the frame finish. Take note of how the sear assembly fits in its place. Wiggle decocking lever out of the frame, which releases the sear, sear shaft, and sear spring assembly from the frame. Always use a correctly sized pin punch. 
I start with a short punch and then transition to a longer punch of the same size. Remove extractor and spring. Do not lose the extractor pin. The roll pins holding the firing pin assembly in place is two piece, an inner roll pin and an outer pin. Always use the correct size punch. Be sure it is a roll pin punch. Drive both roll pins from right to left just far enough to release the firing pin. Remove the firing pin. Remove firing pin safety lock and spring. Remove the firing pin spring. Unless refinishing, no need to fully remove the pin from the slide. Danger. Removing the hammer spring pin from the strut is fraught with many things that can go wrong. The mainspring is under great pressure. Remember, you cannot easily replace parts that go flying off and are never found again. The biggest reason that this will occur is trying to do the task without proper equipment and or no assistance. Be warned. If all you are doing is cleaning a dirty pistol, you might want to treat this assembly as you did the takedown lever and clean it as a whole unit. If you will be fully disassembling this piece, I use the following tools. A small arbor press. A small machinist vise, a clamp to hold everything in place, and the correct rolling pin punches. I also use a pair of medical clamp pliers to hold the very small mainspring pin during removal. Tighten the magazine catch end of the assembly in the machinist vise with the strut sticking up. Clamp the vise to the arbor bay so it will not easily slip or move. Wrap a piece of masking tape around the upper half of the assembly so that the spring can be constrained if the setup slips during the removal process. Also place a towel or paper under the press to help catch the very small main spring pin when it is punched out. With a piece of soft non-stick material covering the top of the strut to avoid damage, Compress the assembly and hold just enough so that the mainspring pin can be carefully punched out.
When ready, slowly and carefully relieve the pressure on the arbor so that the strut comes free of the magazine catch. Unless you are refinishing or removing the barrel, frame disassembly is now complete. You can use the same cleaning solutions and materials as you would for normal cleaning. I do one thing different, however. After the normal cleaning process, I ensure that all the internal parts are wiped almost dry. Then, instead of oil or other gun lubricants, I use molybdenum sulfide. This graphite type powder rubs into the interacting metal surfaces and provides an extremely slick surface that is not affected by temperature changes, nor does it become gummy. The caveat is that if the firearm is going to be in battle or is regularly worn outside the body in inclement weather, such as a uniform holstered pistol, more severe interior metal surface protection is required. Another reason for not doing this full disassembly yourself is that if you wish to have an action job and or a trigger job completed on the pistol, now would be the time. You will notice that the working parts of this P230 look as if it has had considerable use. That is not the case. In fact, the pistol was nearly pristine when new, but I had already completed an action job on the gun during a previous disassembly.